Fred Film Radio. I'm David Martos. This is the 67th edition of San Sebastian Film Festival. We are here with François Girard, the director of The Song of Names. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, how does it feel closing this big festival? I mean, you've been here before, but uh, how does it feel? You know what? It's my first time at the festival. I came, came uh, long ago, I came to, uh, uh, briefly to San Sebastian. So I'm pretty much discovering uh, the city and the festival, but the, the, it's probably one of the best reputation. This everybody loves coming here. Everybody wants to come here, and uh, I think it's great to be part of it. Yeah, there are festivals that are more important in the circuit, but this one is beautiful, and yeah, that wins. So um, the Song of Names, um, I would say it's a film about um, memory. Yeah, about forgiving. Um, wh why this film? Why this idea? Well, first of all, it comes from a book. Um, Norman de Brecht uh, is a, a uh, Jewish scholar and a music scholar and wrote this story uh, that's very pregnant. Uh, it takes a very interesting angle on a page of history. But you're right to say that the film is about memory. Um, I, think, I think one reason why I made this movie and I got interested, uh, the main reason is that I think we live in a world uh, that is sick, deeply sick with amnesia. I think where technology and our little phones and our little screens brought us into the captivity of the present time. I think we live more than ever we because uh, prisoners of the present, and film uh, is a great antidote. I think the movies are a great antidote, like other mediums too, but literature to escape the present, look back at the past, or face the future. Uh, I think this. 50% of the people younger than 30 years old don't even know the word Holocaust. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're like right there faced with a pretty grim vision of how, of how history got digested. And if, we're, if, we can't, if we can't remember, then we're most likely to repeat horrible mistakes. And uh, so I think the, that would be the for main purpose of, of this movie for me and, and my mission in it. Mm -hmm. It's funny that you mentioned this uh, kind of technological amnesia because uh, every year more and more films and more and more TV series are produced and you're contributing to that. I mean, we are like with this flood of content these years. Yeah, uh, yes, but it's we're talking two separate things here where our daily life, uh, besides screening uh, at home or in the theaters, I think our daily life is dictated by the small screen, by the computers, by our communications, our text messages, and our phone calls and and emails, and we're all glued to that machine that drags us into a very narrow vision of the world into the present time. Uh, I think there's great power in the technology, and uh, but I think we have to, uh, and our relationship to the future might be even more critical. I think uh, again, like uh, we're now like being told by the young ones, like <laughs> look in the future, stop looking into the present. Like I think our future needs attention, and and uh, we need to take the time, take the space, step back, and and think think about future and looking in the future. I think the best way to uh, enrich that or enlighten that is to get a sense of the past. Mm -hmm. One of the main challenges of your film, I would say, is reflecting the life of the protagonists in several moments of, 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 their, of their life, of, of time. Um, why did you decide to do it um, the way you did? And, um, and, and it's a, I mean, it's a big decision, like uh, selecting big actors like Tim and uh, Clive only for one part of the life, although they are present, um, uh, Tim is present in the whole film. Why these decisions? Well, it's not a decision. It's a, that was implied into the story. Like you have uh, two characters that are, we follow from ten years old to fifty-five, uh, which is my age, and then uh, uh, necessarily, like you will have to have a child, a, a young man, and and an older a man, like in in both parts. So, like it's not um, me deciding that. It's actually like you. You're right to point it out. But the first thing I saw when I read the script. Uh, is that uh, I knew that this would be my my biggest my biggest challenge and and uh, right from the top I started working on that changed the script to make it work 
the way it, it works right now, like uh, create separation between the young ones. Uh, so in the script, uh, at the script stage, there was a lot of attention to it, and then uh, and then casting was mm -hmm. like a incredible puzzle, but very interesting. Like I was drawn into it, and then how do you create two trios? And three pairs. How do you can like create chemistry between the two young ones and Clavin and um, Tim? And how do you create con vertical con continuity? And and that was like a very delicate operation. And it like and then it goes. And then once you have the actors, how you work? We had sessions mm -hmm. like uh, with the three. Like most of those sessions were talking but sharing because they're not gonna work together, they're not gonna be on set together, they're all playing in separate, separate scenes. Uh, so you, I had a number of sessions with the three Davidos and the three Martins where the actors would share with me the vision of the character and discuss, and it was very interesting to see the very young ones, like Luke Doyle's never played in a movie, but would actually take his place in that discussion and explain to Clive his vision of the part. So <laughs> it was very uh, rich, um, um, and I see, I see now that like we were uh, in Toronto, I had uh, almost all of them, and the three Martins have created a bound, like they've like they be become bro yeah. they become a family, and and it's it's wonderful. So like I've worked two years to to create that family. Like once you finally see them together, like holding uh, <laughs> each other, like it's a uh, it's it's a great feeling. I would like you to go to to comment on your collaboration with Tim Roth. Um, I don't know if he's if he was particularly moved by this story, and why did you uh, uh, choose him, and how was your work together? Uh, Tim, uh, like you should ask him why he took the part because uh, I'm not gonna. I will this. I will this afternoon. I'm I'm not gonna answer, but like uh, Tim, Tim was the uh, uh, I think one of the great things that happened to this story. Um, the character that he plays is on paper, like could either be dull or syrupy, or could go many different ways. I think uh, uh, Tim's intelligence and sharpness. Tim, even when Tim does nothing, you see in his eyes that the brain, the brain is spinning. And uh, one of the great things he does, and we I share that with him, like his his listening moments are always captivating. So I think Tim brought to the character exactly what it needed, needed edge and sharp edged uh, and then like uh, 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 Tim was also a great antidote to the potential of uh, syrupy uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, so there's no sugar with them and uh, that's exactly how I saw the part and it was great um, in that sense. Now that you talk about the, the, the acting process what kind of director are you? I mean are you a director on the set I mean that talks a lot to the actors, that gives notes, or you remain silent and behind the monitor, for example. I have no recipe. Like uh, I'm, I'm trying to find out what the actors need, and I do every this. actor. Differently. Yeah, I think there's no, there's no, uh, there's no recipe. There's no method. Uh, there's, uh, yeah, I'm, I am myself. I see the world a certain way, and I express myself a certain way, and uh, I've got my ideas. So yes, I'm probably different from any other director, but. I consider that I should, like, I grew that idea. My only method is to not have any method and to come fresh to every actor and see what they need. Some need intellectual exchange, some needs mark on the floor, some needs um, a space, some needs support, some needs to be challenged, some needs to be emotionally uh, stimulated. So. I think, and it's the same thing at the opera, it's the same thing in every medium, like uh, my directing uh, with performers is like first to understand what they need and, and uh, working with Tim and Clive is a completely different process and because they're very different artists and, and um, so that's, that's my answer. <laughs> and my final question would be about music, you, you have this musical background in your films and um, now you've, you've seen all of your, of your films with, with an audience and maybe you have been able to check if music, as I think we believe, is a powerful vehicle for, for carrying emotions to people. Well, music is, uh, I mean, it's probably more evident in my work, but any filmmaker you're going to meet in this festival will tell you the same thing. It's the most powerful language. It doesn't need any subtitles 
travels through cultures, doesn't need explanation. It talks to the heart like deeper than any other language. Uh, so I, th I think this is why we're all obsessed with it. Um, and I think it's true for all filmmakers. As you, uh, to see it with an audience, um, in a film like this, like, like there's probably like music takes a, a bigger part as a vehicle. It's not about music, but the, the vehicle as a, the title should, says it. Uh, and the uh, pivotal, uh, art, uh, like the turning point of the movie, uh, the, of the movie happens in music. So, yes, to see it uh, with an audience is interesting at that level, many other levels. Uh, also, like, uh, it's always the same thing. My job as a director is to be the audience before the audience shows up. Mm -hmm. So an actor acts and then uh, I'm, I'm there uh, sitting in the middle of a, a theater. Uh, and you have to abstract everything and be there. And there's a day where your job is done, where your role has ended uh, and you have to pass it on to the audience. And uh, I'm going to have another experience like this tonight with the, um, at, in San Sebastian. I'm very grateful to be here. Good luck with that. Yep. Thank you very much, François Dirat, for the interview. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Pleasure. Very good. I'm David Marto. This is an interview for Fred, the Festival Insider.